there's much more to the solar system than the sun and the nine planets. There are comets in strange and varied orbits. Some don't make it and plunge into the sun. Others just miss. Comets are the wild cards of the planetary pack. This is amateur video of cosmic debris falling to Earth as a fireball. It was flotsam from space that probably did for the dinosaurs. 65 million years ago, dinosaurs ruled the world. They'd survived for many millions of years. Suddenly, they disappeared. Their demise is increasingly attributed to a catastrophe, the impact of a body, possibly eight kilometers wide, that hit the Yucatan Peninsula in what's now Mexico. The result was continuous winter, as a vast cloud of dust and water vapor enveloped the globe. Along with most other living creatures, the dinosaurs were gone. It's from the Oort cloud, a halo of debris beyond the farthest planets, that comets are drawn. They're attracted by the gravity of the sun. A comet is a dirty snowball, a relic from the formation of the solar system. Now, as it nears the sun, an incredible metamorphosis. It begins to effervesce. The warmth of the sun causes vaporization. Gas and dust stream off as a tail of plasma. By now, the comet is in close solar orbit, its tail blown backwards by the solar wind. Only for a short time within the inner solar system does the comet have this classic shape. Its tail will disappear. A photograph shows its features. The nucleus is shrouded in dense cloud, the coma. There are yellow tails of dust and a straighter tail of ionized gas fluorescing blue over millions of kilometers. The most famous comet is this one, Halley. The great ellipse which comet Halley describes through the solar system takes 76 years. From its farthest point beyond Neptune, Halley hurtles towards the inner planets. The comet last rounded the sun in 1986. For us, it was Halley's first space age appearance. As the comet began its return to the outer reaches, five robot explorers raced to take a look. Two Soviet, two Japanese, and a European probe, which would pass through Halley's coma. From well away, the Soviets measured the temperature of Halley's nucleus, a surprisingly hot 40 degrees Celsius at the surface. The Japanese detected a hydrogen envelope spread for 20 million kilometers. But the European probe, Giotto, was going for real contact, a plunge into Halley's coma. These are Giotto's pictures. At the center, the nucleus, nine kilometers by 15, Gas is streaming from it at 20 tons a second, dust at 10. Battered by debris from the coma, Giotto flew to within 600 kilometers of the nucleus. From Earth, this was the best picture. But as Halley receded, its image faded. Then in 1990, it brightened. The comet it's thought had been struck by an asteroid or there'd been some sort of explosion. At each swing past the sun, a comet leaves a trail of debris. When Earth encounters the trail, the result is shooting stars.
They are showers of cometary dust burning up in the atmosphere. They're periodic and predictable as our orbit crosses the trails of recorded comets. Earth is continually bombarded by tiny meteors. They streak in at up to 250,000 kilometers per hour to vaporize high overhead. Sometimes they're bigger, lumps of planetary debris from the size of a fist upwards that survive to the surface, meteorites descending as fireballs. An American videoing his office in 1992 caught this fireball in the sky over Pittsburgh. Part of it hit a car in New York. This is a typical stony meteorite, the dark crust caused by the friction of air melting the rock. The atmosphere also gouged these thumbprints on this iron meteorite. This one was probably blown off the moon by an ancient impact. And this may be from Mars. A meteorite hits Earth every two hours. Beyond Mars are the asteroids, a vast belt of material left over from the formation of the solar system or from a collision of young planets. Heading for Jupiter, the space probe Galileo caught an asteroid in close-up. It had an odd shape, 17 kilometers long, pictured in 1991, the closest ever encounter. Its name, Gaspera. Pocked and battered, Gaspera was rich in metal, unlike the lighter Martian moons Phobos and Deimos, themselves believed to be captured asteroids. In 1992, a picture of something orbiting beyond Pluto, the 10th planet? No, an icy body. 300 kilometers wide. This is Chiron, another asteroid-like body, but displaying a coma here in blue, evidence perhaps that comets and asteroids have similar parentage. These are radar images of asteroid Castalia, possibly two bodies in close embrace. And from 1992, this is two Tatis, which came within four million kilometers of Earth. Such encounters are nothing new. At any one time, 50 tiny asteroids are buzzing the Earth and Moon. The occasional major impact is inevitable. The results can be catastrophic. Like the Manicouagan crater in Quebec, a gigantic impact from 200 million years ago. And from later in Australia, Gosser's Bluff, now well eroded. And Wolf Creek, much younger from 60,000 years ago. This one in Arizona is relatively small, but it was punched just 25,000 years ago. And it'll happen again. And what's this at the heart of Europe? It's a brand new theory, but observe these computerized images from satellite. For all the world, we're looking at an enormous distorted impact crater lying between the Alps and the Baltic. Next time in Encyclopedia Galactica, we go star trekking across the universe. A beginner's guide to the fundamentals of this interstellar sport. How the stars, planets and moon move across the firmament and how to get the best from your binoculars. A detailed look at the night sky with the stars and constellations of the northern summer and the southern winter. Cygnus in the north and Centaurus in the south next time in Encyclopedia Galactica.
Next this afternoon, why NASA concentrated resources on developing the Space Shuttle and a look at our future in space.